Hey everyone, and thanks for watching. Over the next few minutes, I'll show you how to use my real estate equity waterfall model with optional catch up and clawback provisions. So this model is going to look similar to the other equity waterfall models that I've built over the years, uh, but the functionality is far more versatile. So here you can model both a European style waterfall where the GP does not get into the promote until the LP has received a full return of capital and, and hit its preferred return. But you can also model other uh, styles such as American styles where you can promote the GP before the LP uh, hits its uh, return of capital and, and its first hurdle. Uh, we can also handle uh, distributions both during operation as well as at the capital event. And so I've bifurcated those out. I have allowed for, of course, the option to uh, distribute 100% to the LP with a GP catch-up. And how that logic works is 100% of the excess cash flow is distributed to the, the limited partner until the limited partner hits its preferred return, at which point the model automatically calculates how much a profit cash flow was distributed to the LP in order to get the LP to its preferred return and a return of capital. And then it uh, distributes 100% of any excess cash flow above that until the GP has caught up to the LP uh, in terms of profit distribution. And it distributes based on some promote level that's in that second hurdle. So let's imagine that uh, the, G, the LP has hit its preferred return uh, and has received a, all of its capital back, and the GP has a 15% promote. Well, the model will look at how much was distributed to the LP, gross that up by the 85% distribution percentage to the LP, and then distribute whatever that amount is, 15% of that to the GP. Uh, up until the GP has a promote level of, in this case, 15% at that second hurdle. Uh, and then it will continue through the water, waterfall at, uh, per uh, the assumptions that you enter here. And so just let me show this to you. Uh, I'm going to add, I don't know, a 20 million, oops, $20 million capital event. And so what you'll see is during operation, all distributions go to the LP. Uh, actually, let me zero that out. No distributions in this case are going to the GP, uh, such that during operation, 100% of the distributions are going to the LP. At the capital event, the LP receives, in this case, 7.102 million, and that gets the LP to an 8% internal rate of return. And there's 12.897 million remaining. And up until this point, the a GP has received no distributions. Well, uh, the catch-up then calculates how much unpaid promote, in this case 1.253 million, would be required in order for the GP to receive a 15% promote up to that point. Uh, and so then assuming there's sufficient cash flow to pay that, the model pays out that 15%. Uh, the GP, or in other words, the GP catches up to the LP, and then the model flows through to the next tier. Again, distributing at this point 15 to the GP, 85% to the LP, up to a 12, and then whatever percentage up to, in this case, a 15, and then above that, whatever distribution percentage as is modeled under your capital event. And so uh, just a few of the nuances to keep in mind, you can adjust the contribution percentage, uh, really as, as here we're calling it ownership share, here. And anytime the limited partner is responsible for less than 100%, the option for a catch up and a clawback uh, go away. Uh, so the catch up and the clawback assume that the LP is contributing 100% of the capital. Uh, you take it to here and now you have the option to distribute a promote during operation or not. And this will then automatically calculate the promote. This assumes that the partnership promotes the GP. 
uh, such that the GP's distribution percentage is a combination of its promote plus its pro rata share of the, the partnership's remaining cash flow. And again, that's during operation. And then during the capital event, a similar thing, you set the hurdle rate. Uh, this is an internal rate of return with annual periods. And then some promote at each of the hurdle levels. And the last thing is to drop in the cash flows from your DCF. And this is split between what we're calling investment cash flows, operating cash flows, and reversion cash flows. If you've taken our accelerator, you know when I talked about the anatomy of the, of the real estate DCF, really your DCF is broken up into these three cash flow types. And so as an example, let me show you how those cash flows look, say, in my all-in-one model. So I come here to the property cash flow tab, and we see a levered cash flow line. And this levered cash flow line is a combination of those investment cash flows, the operating cash flows, and the reversion cash flows. The investment cash flows in this case is the sum of total investment cost uh, offset by any financing less any financing fees, or in this case, 4898066. Uh, our operating cash flows in this case is cash flow after financing, right? So cash flow from operations minus any debt service or cash flow after financing. Those are our operating cash flows. And then our reversion cash flows are the sum of gross reversion value adjusted for any selling costs and any payoff of the permanent debt. So how do I link this then to this workbook? Well, my suggestion would be, so you have your DCF model, uh, here I'm using again the all-in-one, but really it can work with any real estate DCF model that has annual periods. I'm gonna take this worksheet, I'll pull it into my DCF, and I'll just link uh, these up. So for my investment cash flows, so to do that, first I will sum up my investment cash flow. So come over here to the property cash flow tab, and what are my investment cash flows? In this case, it's total investment costs, plus, uh, let's see, construction financing draws, construction financing payoff, permanent financing funding, and permanent financing fees, All right? So those would be my investment cash flows. I need to make that negative, such that the resulting value here is positive. Copy that out to the right. Next, my operating cash flows, this is an easy one, just linked to uh, here starting in time zero, which right now is a min. So I'll copy that out to the right and then set this time zero to zero. And then finally reversion cash flows for the sum of, uh, and that would be here reversion value, selling costs at reversion, and then permanent financing payoff. I copy that out to the right. And then finally I'll turn these green to denote that there are links to another tab. So I'm, I have, well, we're just doing an air check, an IRR of 9.91%. If I come back here, 9.91%, equity multiple 2.3, 2.31, All right, so this is flowing through correctly. From here and then, I can just adjust my waterfall uh, assumptions depending on the partnership structure that we have, and this will model out uh, the returns correctly. So with that, I've shared uh, the, our, my real estate equity waterfall model with both catch-up and clawback provisions. Uh, let me know if uh, you have any questions. Thanks for your time.